India has gone through a very complicated and challenging time in negotiating, as it were, its own stand of the crisis. There's no doubt that India, uh, in its very first statement, uh, seemed uh, to be a little unwilling to say anything that the Russians could be upset about. Uh, and therefore, our first explanation of vote did not convey anything uh, about the violation of state sovereignty and the UN Charter, of the fact that to be a long held force to be inadmissible to resolve disputes, and that the territory of Ukraine had been encroached upon in a way that no state would agree to see that territory encroached upon. In our subsequent statements, while we have continued to abstain on the votes uh, at the UN, we have been uh, a little more bold in reiterating these principles, and our diplomacy has taken into account the multifarious interests we have to look after. With Russia, we have a dependence uh, on the military relationship, which has accounted at one time for 80% of our major weapon systems. Today, more like 50, but spare parts for the time when we had 80 are still uh, needed from Russia. So because of all of these interests, there was a bit of dancing on the tightrope that went on. But increasingly, now that the students are out and that uh, the, the war has not progressed as the Russians would have hoped for the speed the Russians would have hoped. My expectation is that uh, uh, India will come under more and more pressure to calibrate its stand, uh, perhaps to press the Russians a little more to end their adventure, uh, and at the same time to stand up for some of these principles more overtly. Uh, at the same time, I must say that our diplomacy has been effective in ensuring that there is more understanding of our position than uh, might have been expected. And some other state taking the stand we had taken might have been given a tougher time by the world than India, because India does matter to many countries. You know, it's been devastating because of one obvious impact everyone knows is the dramatic increase in oil prices, which has affected all our fuel uh, everywhere in the world. In the case of India, it's going to knock our budget projections completely out because Nirmala ji had an estimated in her budget of February uh, oil at uh, $75 a barrel. Uh, it's been as high as 130 it's certainly above 100 even today. And in those circumstances, uh, all her calculations, her assumptions about growth, about fiscal deficit, everything, you may as well tear up and throw away. It has no, no significant impact. Ukraine is a country that uh, uh, has been highly productive in terms of 30% of the world's wheat exports are coming out of Ukraine. 70% of India's sunflower seeds and sunflower oil comes from Ukraine. So all of these things will affect the world market, will affect us also. I suppose one small silver lining is because of the wheat shortages coming out of Ukraine and the fact that that will last because they couldn't do any planting while the war is going on. Uh, some of our wheat exports will suddenly take off. I think our Punjabi farmers will be able to sell some wheat at higher prices and even the government MSP that they have been agitating for. So there will be a, uh, some, some, some uh, small sectors will benefit, but for the most part, it will have a very negative effect on our economy. And Nirmala ji is quite justified in pointing that out in the House. Uh, this is uh, something beyond our control. But the position we take, the stand we take, and whatever constructive actions we can undertake, to bring this um, conflict to an early end, uh, I think those are things that we are, are within our control and we should do what we can in those areas.